I'm working on a modification to this jacket. I picked this up many years ago at Hot Topic. They were still carrying a lot of gothic kind of stuff. And I like it, but I want to use it as a uh, placard front shirt or jacket. Uh, kind of like Cato wore as a chauffeur's uniform in Green Hornet. In fact, I'm doing a steampunk version of the Cato character. Uh, the zipper's a little modern. It's also just a little snug on me. If I could open this up just a little, it would be wonderful. So what I'm going to do is make a pattern for another one of these placard fronts. And if I do that, I can just button it in place. In fact, I can open this up, stretch it a little, button it in place, and I'll have a solid cover here. I'm also going to put a little embroidery on it to reinforce the Green Hornet theme. But it's an interesting project. Not a lot of sewing to it, a lot of buttonholes, but not a lot of actual sewing. Uh, but you do have to make your own pattern. So I'm going to show you the way that I do that. Okay, here is my um, jacket. And what I want to do is get a pattern for this placard. But I'm going to make life a little bit more interesting for myself. And I'm going to spread this out. This jacket is just a little bit tight. And it would be a little bit easier if I had a couple inches in between it. You can see there's a zipper in there now. I'm going to leave the zipper. But once I cover the whole thing with a placard in this size, you shouldn't see it. Be a little bit of a gap at the neck, but I can always fill that with a scarf or a jabot or something wonderful like that. In order to get a pattern for this, I'm going to do a trick that was shown to me by some of the more experienced Customers. I'm going to start with just some tissue paper. And I only need one sheet. If I lay this over this pattern and then take a charcoal pencil. I always keep charcoal pencils and um, chalk pencils in my sewing kit so that we can do neat little things like this and make marks. What I'm going to do is carefully trace the outline of that. I can feel it with my fingers. I also feel the buttons. So if I just come in here and I lightly trace along it. It's like making a, um, you've seen it where you put a piece of uh, tissue paper over a tombstone and then you rub charcoal over it and it picks up the indentations. Well, this is picking up the high edges, which are the seams. Because I know the shape of this, I can cheat a little bit and just pretty much mark out the limits of it. So here's the upper corner. So I'm just tracing that outer edge. Okay. And then at the top, I'm that indexed right. You could pin this in place. I'm too lazy. Now I need to make a little bit of a judgment call. I can feel where the middle of this is, and I only have to do half, because this is going to be a single piece. I'll fold my fabric in half and use this as the pattern for the whole thing. So I just will sketch those in. 
And that's my new pattern. I'm not going to mark the position of the buttons yet. I'll wait until uh, I'm done because I can uh, actually pop that little placard out of the buttons and have something that I can very carefully put those in. So here's the pattern all cut out. You'll notice I left almost a two inch seam allowance uh, on the bottom and the sides and that's because I'll fold that in and the buttonholes will go through both layers of fabric and that'll just give me a lot of strength as I go along. I left nothing along the center line so I'm going to place that directly on the fold but as you can see this is wider than my um, wider than the original piece, so I'm going to have that extra gap in the middle to make this jacket a lot more comfortable to wear. Okay, I've cut out my piece. Uh, it is folded, so that when I open it up, I'll have the full size uh, piece put together. Yay! When I did, when I cut it, I did end up cheating that center line over about a half an inch. Uh, so I'm, instead of getting a big three and a half or four inch gap between it, I should be down closer to the two inches I originally needed. Uh, the only other thing I need to do now is grab a chalk pencil, chalk pencil, and mark some of these points. so that I know where it should really be folded. Now, one of the tricks I can do on this is, remember, this is going to cover an existing placard front. If I make it a little bigger, then the placard front is guaranteed to cover all the way. So I think I'm going to do that. Just give it about a quarter inch or so. Just to hide any mistakes I will inevitably make. Check your indexing all the time on this because now that I've unpinned it, I need it to actually be where it's supposed to be and not move around on me. Okay, so here are all of my little chalk marks showing where I'm going to fold it. So I'm going to take that to the ironing bolt and fold and press it uh, on each side. Okay, I'm just test fitting it now. I have just folded the edges and um, ironed them. So it's got the shape I want, it's got the curves I want on the side, and because it's just a little bit bigger than the piece under it, it'll hide any mismatches on that. Okay, give me a little bit more room. So I think that looks good. I'm going to sew it up now. Okay, now it gets exciting. <laughs> what I want to do is do tone-on-tone -tone embroidery. Be interesting to see how this comes out. Um, it's black thread on black background, so all you get is a texture out of it. But it's the 1960s version of the Green Hornet uh, logo. And I like that. Keep flipping it over because this is the backing. I can see it better. I'd like that here in the middle. So I've kind of got to define where that is. Decide how high I want it. I think I want it right there. So I'm going to mark the edges of it with my trusty Taylor's chalk again. 
and that will allow me to mount it on my embroidery hoop frame. So I'm going to wrestle with that, get that running. Uh, it makes more sense to do it now because if I screw this up and have to start over, I don't want to have to throw away the half hour of buttonholing I'm going to do after this. So uh, wish me luck. Okay, I figured I'd show you this hot off the embroidery machine. As you can see, the marks, the other one got embroidered over, were used to get it centered. I'm a tiny bit higher than I originally had planned, but it's okay. Uh, I had plenty of room going to the top, so I can live with that. So then we just pop this out of the frame. This ugly stuff on the back is the stabilizer so that this didn't stretch while it was running. And then I used tearaway. So based on all the times the needle hit it, just tears away. I'll trim up these loose threads and I'm good to go. Okay, a lot of black on black here, so let's see what we can do. I've gone ahead and marked all of the positions for the buttonholes just by laying them over the existing piece. Again, I popped the buttons out so that I could really hit the corner of the buttonholes. I also put two up here in the collar where they aren't now, that's just sewn. So I'm gonna have to come up with something that's a reasonable match for that. I actually think I have it. It's a skull and crossbone on silver. I think I'll be pretty darn close. If not, I may come up with something a little more hornet-like. I've got to go and see what I've got. So let me get on and crank up the button holder and let's see how that looks. Okay, so here's the placard. I got all my button holes done. I've got it in place. I haven't put the buttons up top yet. I got to go looking for those. But uh, did give me well, about, about two inches in the middle, so it's a little more comfortable to wear, but that's hidden nicely. This is a pretty common thing on short jackets because lots of times they are patterned after um, Piper's jackets, like bagpipers, and they to wear a huge buckle and it's cut up short like this. So it's just something I need to remember. If it's a little too glaring based on the shirt that I have under it, because I'll probably just wear a black t-shirt under it, um, I can always just drop a tuxedo cummerbund underneath the belt and that will solve the problem for me. It does kind of make it nice that if I could come up with a real interesting belt buckle, it does frame it. So I like that. So I'm calling this a nice success. I'm very happy with it. The placement of my um, design is good. I can't see it at all in the camera right now, so it is going to be pretty subtle. But that's really more in keeping with the Cato look anyway. So uh, I just have to go now and work on the rest of the Green Hornet outfit. See ya!